everyone. My name is Ms. Ho and I am a physics teacher. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to learn how to use these three linear motion equations to solve calculation problems. So when we look at these three equations, you must of course know what each of these symbols represent. So a gentle reminder as to what they are, S is displacement, which must be in its SI unit meters, T is time of course in seconds, U and V are the initial and final velocities respectively, measured in meters per second, and A is acceleration, measured in meters per second squared. So what we're going to be doing in this video is learning how to use these equations to solve problems. So we have a choice of three different equations here. And if you're wondering, all right, which equation do we use to solve the problem? It depends on what information is provided. I'm going to label this as formula number one, formula number two, and formula number three, so that it's easier for you to be able to follow the flow in this video. Let me just take a screenshot of the equation so that we can use this as a reference when we're solving the questions uh, in the following slides. So let's start with this question. So say you have a question like this where it says a car is traveling at 10 meters per second and it stops after a time of 20 seconds. Question is, what is its acceleration? I'm just going to place the equations at its side here so that we can see how to solve this kind of question. So when you have a word problem like this, the first thing you should do is to take note of what information is provided. So I'm going to um, underline it here. So you have a car traveling at 10 meters per second and it stops. Even this is important information. And it stops after a time of 20 seconds. Questions asking for what? It's acceleration. So I'm underlining acceleration in yellow here to remind you this is what we're looking for. So if you're looking like, okay, um, how do I get started? So this is what you do. You've already highlighted or rather underlined the information provided, right? So what we're going to do next is to list out the information using the symbols in this list of formula, which means that we have to remember, like just now what we saw, right? You must remember what the symbols all represent. What's S, what's T, what's U, what's V, and what's A. So we find that a car is traveling at 10 meters per second and it stops. So you must think, hmm, what does it mean when we say stop? it means the velocity is zero, correct? So the initial velocity is 10 and the final velocity is zero. Time is 20 seconds and you're looking for A. So write that out as well, A question mark. Now, why do we want to write a list like this? Because we can then see what information is provided and what we're looking for. Then what you do is you look at the list of the formula here and look at which formula has all the symbols that you have listed out. So you gotta look for the formula which has U, V, T, and A. Now take a closer look at these three formula and look. Which one has all four? The first formula, correct? You have U, V, T, and A. You can't use the second formula because it has S and S is not listed over here. Neither can you use number three because again, S, you don't have S. So let's take the first formula, which is A equals B minus U over T. Let's write that out. And all you need to do now is just substitute the values inside the equation. So you can see that, okay, we have 0 minus 10 over 20. Working it out, you will have negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared. If your final answer has a negative sign, leave the negative sign there. Because in this case, this negative means that the object is undergoing deceleration. Also remember that your final answer must be in decimal places. You cannot write your answer and leave it in fractions for physics. So that's how you solve this question. Let's take a look at another question. So in this case, we have a uh, different question. So we've got a car starting off at 10 meters per second and it accelerates at 8 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. The question asks for the final velocity. I'm just going to uh, 
paste the equations uh, of the linear motion on the side here as our reference. Some students, when they read the question, they're like, oh, we're looking for the final velocity, which is V. And what they do is they straight away jump to the formula where V is the subject. For example, they take formula number three. If you take a closer look, you cannot use formula number three to solve this question. Let me show you. Similar to what we did earlier, what we'll do is we will list out the information that is provided in this question. And we are looking for the final velocity. To make this easier to solve, what we'll do is we'll list it out. So you can see that the car starts off at 10 meters per second. This is the initial velocity because it starts at this value. So I'll also write it over here, u equals 10 meters per second. It accelerates at 8 meters per second squared. So I'll write it out too, 8 meters per second squared. And this is the time, 5 seconds. We're looking for the final velocity, v, so I'll just put here v is equal, question mark. So you can see that you can't use formula number 3 because formula number 3 has v, u, a, and s. Problem is, if you look at the list that we have written out here, there's no s. So you've got to look for the formula which has all four. So if you take a closer look, you're like, but wait a minute, v is not our subject. How do we solve it? It's okay. What you do is you just put in the values first and then we'll rearrange it. So I'm just going to put a different color here so that's easier to see. So we'll just write out the formula first. A equals v minus u over t. Substitute all the values you know inside. So we have 8, v is unknown, we have u which is 10, and time is 5 seconds. So what you just need to do is just rearrange numbers so that you can find v. So bringing this up, you'll have 40 equals v minus 10. Working it out, you will get v equals 50 meters per second. And that's how you solve using this formula. Now, I think you're getting the hang of it, right? Let's try another question. So we have an object initially at rest, moving in a straight line with constant acceleration, and it covers a distance of 150 meters in 10 seconds. And you need to calculate the acceleration. So again, let's just place the three formula here for our reference. And I will underline the values that are given. So we have an object initially at rest. Even this is information that you need. All right? So it moves in a straight line, constant acceleration, that tells us it's linear motion. So you can use one of the linear motion equations, covering a distance of 250 meters in 10 seconds. Now, even though they use the term distance, you can use this uh, value as a displacement as well. Some questions do use the term distance and displacement interchangeably. Now, you and I know that they're not exactly the same, but when it comes to solving questions like this, if they give you distance, let's just take it as displacement. So this means that this is actually S. This is, of course, t. When it's initially at rest, rest means it's not moving, so this is zero initially, right? So this is actually our u. So u equals zero. S is 250 meters. Time is 10 seconds, and we are looking for the acceleration. So don't make the mistake of, oh, we're looking for a straight away take formula number one. That's not how you solve it. Remember, we've written this list out. Let's look for the formula that has all four symbols. Which, if you take a closer look, it's formula number two. So let me write that out so that you can see it clearly. S equals ut plus half a t squared. Let's now put in the known values into the equation. So we have 250 equals 0 times 10 plus half a 10 squared. Now we know, of course, it is 0, so you can actually ignore this. So we will have 250 equals to 100, right? Because 10 squared is 100 divided by 2 gives you 50. Solving this, you would get 5 meters per second squared. And that's how you solve it. Let's do another question. So again, I'm just going to paste the uh, three equations here on the side as our reference. Okay, so... Let's take a look at what information is given again. So we have a car traveling at 30 meters per second and it stops after a distance of 15 meters. And we are looking for the acceleration. So we have a car traveling at 30 meters per second and it stops. So this is the U. It stops, right? Stops means that it's not moving. So that's zero. 
because this is the latter or rather the final velocity, this would be v. Distance, remember what I said just now? We can use this as our displacement, so that's s. So we have u equals 30 meters per second, v equals 0, s equals 15 meters, and we are looking for the acceleration. Take a look at the three equations that we have on hand and see which one has all four symbols that we need. UV S A, last one, right? So this time, yes, we can finally use the third formula. So we have V squared equals U squared plus 2 A S. So substituting um, the known values in here, you got 0 squared equals 30 squared plus 2 A, which is unknown, times 15. 0 squared is, of course, 0. Let's leave that as 0. 30 squared is 900, and we have 30A. Rearranging and calculating and all that, you would get A as negative 30 meters per second squared. Just to test whether we really know what we're doing, one more time with the formula on the side. So this time, this question has two parts. You have a and B. So we have an object initially at rest, which was in a straight line with constant acceleration covering a distance of 200 meters in 10 seconds. So you need to find the acceleration as well as the final velocity. So what information do we have at rest initially, right? So this is U equals zero. Distance of 200 meters, displacement, right? So that's S and 10 seconds is T. We're looking for acceleration and final velocity. So let's write it out. U equals 0, S equals 200 meters, T equals 10 seconds. All right, so let's solve A first. So for A, we're looking for, well, A. I'm going to write it a little bit smaller because there are two parts to this question. So look for the formula which has U, S, T, and A. That's formula number 2, correct? So we have S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. You have 200 equals to 0 times 10 plus half unknown a 10 squared. Working it out, this is of course 0, so you have 200 equals 100 over 2, 50 a, and that's how you get 4 meters per second squared. To solve b, let me write it on this side so that we have more space, we're looking for v. Now, in this question, you can see that, okay, you have a lot of information now. You not only do you have UST, you also have A, which we solved in question A. So you can either use formula number 1 or formula number 3 to find B. You can't use number 2 because there's no V in there, no point, right? Now, whether you use formula number 1 or number 3, it doesn't matter because you will get the same answer. Let me show you. So I'm going to write here first, A equals V minus U over T. 4 equals to v, which is unknown, divided by 10. And you will get v as 40 meters per second. Now, if you try to use the other formula, which is v squared equals u squared plus 2a as, you would also get the same answer. Let me show you. You will have 0 squared plus 2 times 4 times 200. 2 times 4 times 200 you will get 1,600. Remember, you need to square root because this is b squared. So this means that b is square root of 1,600, giving us 40 meters per second. Now, actually, because of the square root, you will actually get plus minus. But because from the question, you can see that it's moving in a straight line with constant acceleration, which means it's moving in one direction, you can actually drop the negative. So it means you ignore the negative, you can leave it as a positive number, and that's how we get 40 meters per second as well. So as you can see, it doesn't matter which formula you use, you will still get the same answer. So I hope you have found this video useful in helping you understand how to use these formulas to solve word problems involving linear motion calculations. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Happy studying!